be here in our beautiful location, Cleveland, Tennessee. Outside, I was at the soccer complex yesterday, and the leaves are already beginning to change colors. And can we say thank you, Lord? That means it's a new season, of course, and I believe all of us are ready for a new season to move past this pandemic that we're in. Do you believe that? So would you stand with us as we get ready? We are so excited to go into worship today. Those of you that are watching online, wherever you're watching, we just want to say welcome, and we are glad to have you here with us. But let's just invite, of course, invite ourselves and, and just cause our minds to just slow down because we can't invite the presence of the Lord to be here. He's already here. You realize that? But what we can do is slow our hearts down, slow our minds down, slow, begin to capture every thought and every imagination that would try to set itself up against the things of the Lord. We can, he tells us to capture those. That means they're running wild right now. So right now, as we get ready to go into worship today, let's capture those thoughts and put them under the power of the blood of Jesus because worship attracts the word and that is Jesus Christ. Father, we are here because you have given us breath in our bodies. And Father, it is the very breath that we have that we're going to turn around, Lord, as you have given it as a gift for us We want to turn and lay it back down to you. Give it back to you. Father, it is you, Lord, the the book of Acts declares that it is in you that we live, that we move, that we have our being. Father, it is the same breath of life that you breathe into Jesus Christ. Father, it raised him from the dead, that allowed him to walk out of the victorious grave, Father God, victoriously on that day. Lord, that same breath is breathing in our lives, breathing in our lungs, breathing in our situations. Although, Father, it may appear, Lord, that nothing is happening. Father, you're working all things together because we love you and we're called according to your purpose in this hour, in this time, in this earth. And Father, we just ask you that you would accept our worship. Father, look, well, we ask you, Lord, to be with those that are traveling today. Father, those that are traveling even now. Father, that you would just give them safety, Lord, and protection. We pray for, Lord, our health care workers, Lord, others, our pastors that are assuming pulpits around the, the nation and the world right now in this hour, that you would empower them with the spirit of the living God to preach the living word that will bring, Lord, the dead to life. Father, we ask you to let your spirit be poured out upon us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together.
power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And Almighty Fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine. of heaven. 
sing it. I'm desperate for you. The psalmist declared, as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul goes after you. A song just before that, we began, to, we, it's a newer song, and I know, and it, and it may be something that you may not be familiar with, but if you took just a moment to reflect on what the song was saying, and even, maybe you didn't know how to sing it, maybe you just said it. But yesterday, I was at the soccer complex, and, and, and it seems to, and I'm going to bring this up, and I almost like, do I go in between, do I just wait? Because there seems to be a resound, an, an undergirding current that is taking place in the midst of everything that is going wrong around us. It's the undergirding current of revival. Because what is taking place, and what if you don't, and I, I've been hearing it, and, I'm, I'm, and when I say this, I'm not saying it just within the circles of PRC. I'm hearing it among my Baptist friends. I'm hearing it among my, my Presbyterian friends, my Methodist friends, my unsaved friends sometimes. You know, and I, what I'm hearing is that, is that in the middle of COVID, in the middle of people being in the hospital, in the middle of people being at home, in the middle of death, in the middle of, of the tragedies that are going around us, people are having individual, personal encounters with God. I want you to seek that in for just a minute. They're having individual, personal encounters with their God. And I'm going to tell you what, why, why that's so important. And yesterday we were, we were, I was listening to this parent that's a, a pastor's wife, and she went through it for 54 days, tested positive for 40 days straight. And, and, and had the residual effects of having that from March of last year, and a mom of seven, and, and how it has just completely caused her life to stop. And, but yet she said, in the middle of everything, I had personal encounters with God. And I'm going to tell you that the, the undergirding current that that a lot of times isn't being said. And I stopped and I said, you know, I'm hearing this. And I couldn't help but hear that, we, that when that song come up, I couldn't help but stop and say, I hear the sound of the spirit wind blowing. I can hear the sounds blowing across denominational lines, across generational lines, even across lines of believing because there are unbelievers that are happening. They're saying, I, I just, I did, I've never prayed. But all of a sudden I prayed and something happened. I'm going to tell you that God is moving in the midst of our pain. And what and if, the, if, the, if it's happening in the world, he desires for it to happen more so in his people that are full of praise more so. We're seeing miracles. Sometimes it might not be the fullest miracle of the extent. Last Sunday evening, the last several weeks, we've been praying for our brother, Lee Swafford, who used to sit right over here on the right-hand side. We, we've seen miracles in his life. We've prayed for him. We've prayed for LeBron. We've prayed for others. And a couple of days ago, um, in last week, we even testified, and we thank the Lord for, for Lee coming home. And Sunday night, Lee came home, and he went home to be with the Lord. He had developed some some clots in his lungs that, that it wasn't it was post COVID, but it was it just happened and he went home and I told his wife as I'm sitting there with, standing with her in, in the tragedy and the and she had texted me, Hey, can you come and pray with him? And before we could get there, he had passed. I'm gonna tell you. And I told her, I said, You were there. She said, I did. I said, Do you know that you saw a miracle? She said, I know. Because the hardest thing is in the middle of the tragedy. God provides us with the miracles that we, she saw death defeated right before her very eyes. Well, everything that we believe in, church, this is not just a, a crutch that we stand on. This is not just a hope that we lean on when in times of, of despair, in times of tragedy. No, th the word says this is a living hope. This is a hope that goes beyond the last breath that we breathe. And I want to just encourage us. You may not sense that what is happening, but I promise you that if we go after him and father and we begin to declare, we hear the winds blowing and I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate, desperate for you to show up in my situation. I'm desperate for you to show up in my circumstance because Father, I need to know that you're here with me. You see, that's where Job was at. His friends came to him. They started being encouragers and ended up being discouragers. His wife come at him and, and a lot of times we blame her. And I've told you before, you can't blame a woman who just lost all her children. 
You can't blame a woman who just lost everything and expect her to be okay. But there was something in Job, and he begins to declare, but I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Can you say that this morning? Can we just all declare that together if we believe it? I know my Redeemer lives. In fact, Nicole C. Mullen, our song said, I just spoke to him this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we just give him praise right there where you're at? Father, we thank you. Hallelujah that you're here among us and with us today. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We are so excited to have you here today. Those of you, family and friends, and we are excited to have you here today. And as we come together, we are excited today to have uh, a former, a retired pastor, but he's still a pastor because he never retires from the ministry. We always continue to serve the Lord. But this year he retired at our state convention right here at Peerless Road Church. We are certainly thrilled to have Pastor Jerry and Rachel Robbins here with us. Would you give them a warm PRC welcome? They're sitting right here, here behind Brother McCaleb. We're thrilled to have you here this morning. And they're no, they're, they are no strangers to Peerless Road Church, and we are excited to have them here with us this morning. We are so thrilled to have you. If this is your first time here, in the, in the seat in front of you is a, a connect card. We would love for you to connect with us and just fill that out. And the offering plate is going to be uh, passed in, in a little bit as our ushers are getting ready. And you can, you can fill that in there. Or there's some black boxes on the walls of all of our exits. You can simply just drop those in there. And I'm going to ask our ushers to get ready because for the first time in a very long time, we're getting ready to pass the offering plate as we slowly uh, slowly get back to what we know. We're so thrilled. The Caffeine Connection, of course, if you come in, it's open from 945 to 1020. Come in and just begin to start connecting with one another. And uh, as you get ready to to take up the offer, I'm going to come back in just a minute, but would you pay attention to the screen? We have a message from the Tennessee Governor, Governor Bill Lee. Hey, everybody, I want to let you know about an important day coming up on Monday, October the 11th. This past year has brought enormous challenges for Tennesseans. Uncertainty and loss and even hopelessness for some. But it's in times like these that we are reminded that we are not alone. We have an opportunity to pause and set aside our differences and disagreements and for people of faith to unite around one desire that the God of all comfort and mercy heal our hurting and bless this state. I will once again proclaim a day of prayer and fasting on October 11th. It's an opportunity to put aside our divisions and to thank God for our blessings and ask him for healing, grace, and favor. This is an open invitation, and I hope every Tennessean will join Maria and me on October 11th in prayer and fasting. So we are privileged to have not only a governor that, uh, that will lead us, but he is a, a Christian. We have been beside him, of course, and throughout this pandemic has led us as pastors, joined with us in prayer, and certainly done a phenomenal job leading the state of Tennessee. And this is not the first day that he's done it. Every year that he has been our governor, he has led a day of prayer and fasting. And so we want to just invite, of course, we want to join with our brothers and sisters across denominational lines, across the, uh, the state. And that we come together on uh, Monday, October the 11th, and begin to pray and fast together. Thanking the Lord for what he's doing, but also asking, petitioning the Lord for those that are serving on the front lines across the state of Tennessee, that he'll continue to empower them and do that. And so we want to just be encouraged today as we join together in prayer and fasting on on October the 11th. As we get ready to take up the offering today, we are so blessed that you are here with us. And it goes to our peerless ministers as we begin to start this brand new month. And we are so thankful for your giving, of course, and those of you that have been faithful to give uh, both in the offering boxes, but also online. You can do that at peerlessroadchurch.com. It goes to, you say, well, what do I do when, when I give to peerless ministries? Everything that we do comes out of peerless ministries. And I'll tell you, in November... We're looking at already strategically trying to work uh, that we can have a breakfast for our first responders, our EMTs, our firefighters, and we want to come together and just tell them, hey, we appreciate you. We thank you. It's part of our 21 and 21 emphasis that we'll be talking about. You'll hear more about it in the weeks to come, but that's all a part of Peerless Road working and moving uh, here in this body. Let's pray together as we get ready to give. Ushers, would you come forward? Father, we thank you for your blessings. Father, everything that you have done upon our lives. Father God, in this new season, Lord, that has just began, that has come upon us, we know, Lord, that seasons in our lives come, and and Lord, as seasons come, they, they also go. 
But Father, in this new season, we know that we are thankful that you are already in it. No matter what season we find ourselves in, Father, whether it's a season of lack, it's a season, Father, of, of, of seemingly dullness, or it's a season of life where the spring flowers fly up. Father, we ask you that you would just remind us of your power. Remind us that in the good, in the bad, in the, in the, in the mountains, in the valleys, Father, your presence is there. Father, we thank you, the Lord, that you are always there with us. Father, we want you, Lord, to remind us, Father, as we give today, Father, Lord, that you never forget your children. And Father, as we give in this offerings today, Father, well, we, it may not be publicized here on the stage or on a screen, but Father, every day we're, about, we're asked about provision. Father, weekly we sometimes give provision in different forms. And Father, it's only because, Father, your people have given to this church, given to your ministry. Because then, Father, we give out. And we ask you, Father, that you would bless us. God, that you would just bless us with strength. Bless us with wisdom beyond experience. Father, with empowerment to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Give the Lord praise. Amen. <laughs> Miss Renee, can you put that back up there? We just want to be reminded. Thank you so much. You rebuild. Can you say, can we all say that together? It's almost like a declaration. You rebuild. You restore all that's broken from the ruins. You redeem. You return all that's stolen from your children. That's a powerful reminder to many of us this morning. Amen? Powerful reminder that our God never forgets his children. From the beginning of the word all the way through the, begin, to the, through the end of the word that is recorded, it is a promise he never forgets his children. Never, never. We are so excited to have you here today as, as we get ready to turn into the Word. We're so thankful for, for those of you that are watching online. Welcome again. And as, wherever you're watching today, your families, as we begin to start on this fall break, of course, we want to just be mindful just, just as, we, as we pray, of course, and, and uh, just remind all of our prayer partners for our children, for our youth, for our young adults, don't forget to stop praying. It's the end of the first nine weeks, and so there may be some children within our church that really need prayers when the report cards come home when they get back from fall break, okay? And so uh, to make it a lot harder, but, but continue to pray. I've heard so many amazing things. I was so encouraged, and of course, and out here when you go out the atrium to the right-hand side, there's a table with, with encouragement cards, with Gideon cards and different things that you, and we call that our cheer center. And, and there's a mailbox that you can go there. Some of you, if you're first time here this morning, you're, why is there a mailbox in the middle in their atrium? and different things. And, and each week we've told our prayer partners to encourage and write encouragement cards to our children, to our youth, because in the month of August, it was all about encouragement. And, and I, I went out last week and, and there was uh, whoever the prayer partner for Jay Jennings was, it, the card, the postcard was in there. And we told him, he said, if you don't know the address, put it in that, po- that mailbox. We'll make sure that it gets to the child. Well, on Wednesday night, Jay comes in, Brother Jack, and, and I said, hey, Jay, I said, hey, I pulled something out of the mailbox this week. I said, it's got your name on it. I said, and rather than mailing it to you, I'm just going to hand deliver it to you. And he picked it up, and he read it, and the smile that came off of his face, Dr. Lamb, was a confirmation that this is working. This is what it's all about. And so don't forget to encourage and, and pray and, and do for that. Of course, Jill and I and our family will be traveling today, beginning our fall break. Pastor Josh will be preaching his first sermon in, on a Sunday morning here at Peerless Road Church. Next week, he'll be filling the pulpit. Of course, so we want to be praying for him, and we're excited that he's going to be having that opportunity to come before us. If you have your Bibles, turn with us really quick to the, to the book of Ecclesiastes. It's in the Old Testament. If you don't have it, your Bible with you, you can follow along, of course, on the screens behind us, or you can follow along on the Bible app as well under the events section. You'll find Peerless Road Church. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 4, just the first four verses because the whole chapter goes like this. The writer says, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under the sun. I know some of you who have lived a lot longer than I are, there's a song going through your head, there's a a time, everything, there's a season. Turn, turn, turn. But let's turn to the scripture. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Verse 2, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. What thoughts? I'm going to say a few words that, I, and that we want to talk about. I, we, we identified this. Where the, the title for today would be Fall Break. Because oftentimes, what's going to happen this coming Wednesday, normally our ministries are continually to meet. And, and every spring and every fall, there's so many of our volunteers that have families and different things that, that, that our Wednesday night ministries take a break on fall break and spring break. This Wednesday will be no different. There will be no ministries that are operating on Wednesday night because of fall break. And today, as we talk about it, we just want to draw some attention to this idea of why a fall break. Why take a fall break? And we find it in Scripture. But I'm going to, I'm going to give you some thoughts, that to, to throw out some words. And oftentimes, whenever we begin to speak a word, a thought comes to it. Something comes to that, to that to, it causes some kind of emotion. It could cause a, a good emotion or maybe a bad emotion or whatever else. But whenever I say this word, what, I, just something is going to cut, flood your mind. Okay, you ready? The economy. 
your retirement. COVID-19. Fear. Sickness. Death. What kind of emotions flood your mind? Of course, now, let's change it. Let's try another set of words. Are you ready? Salvation. Healing. Hope. Heaven. Undoubtedly, probably what was taking place in that moment is there was a range of emotions. If we could put you up on the monitors, we would see that there was almost like a... uh, with some words. But then when you think about the word hope, or you think about the word salvation, especially for us, or you think about the word heaven, all of a sudden those emotions and those, they, those, those it's, it's almost like a pick me up. Did that happen to anybody sitting here this morning? Just raise your hand if, if, I, if I just need to know. Okay, good. Because in Ecclesiastes, the author is identifying, he says, listen, he said, for everything there is a season, a time for every matter under the heaven. And the season of fall that we just went into, it brings changes. And a lot of times, We love the change of colors. I mean, we talk about it. We will drive miles to get to the highest peaks around this Tennessee Valley and sometimes into Georgia. Oftentimes, my my wife would, would, uh, as a child, would go to Helen, Georgia. And and now that we've moved to Cleveland, we'll do the same thing sometimes. And we'll go through some winding roads to get to this little small town in the middle of Georgia in October. And and we would see and we would stop and we've got some of those most iconic pictures of our children in some of the beautiful foliage that is behind it. And if we look at that, but do you identify that the, the, all of that beauty is coming because death is taking place? All of that beauty is taking place because the leaves are dying. You realize that? And a lot of times there are changes in our lives. Sometimes they're, they're, they're maybe full, more full of rest than they are of activity. But I want to say what, there's, there's beauty in death. And a lot of times, even we read it last week, that God gives beauty for ashes. There may be some seasons in our life that are full of hope and they're full of brightness and they're full of the sunlight. And there are other days like today where the clouds are very low and it feels very gloomy. But I'm gonna pr- I promise you this, that by, if you can and get up on an airplane or you can get up in your spirit and get above the clouds that you will still see that the sun is shining full of power and full of brightness and what I, sometimes we have to do is get a hold and say hey soul, hey spirit I know it may feel like the situations and there are seasons that are changing in my life but God the son of God he's still shining as the brightness of the day he is, his love is still shining bright, his hope is still powerful hope is still shining life is still there I read a different uh, an article the other day I started this on Wednesday night with the guys and, and the other day and I went back and looked at a new Gallup poll that, that just came out and it said that 76% of people the other day when I read it a year ago it was 56% and, or 58% today it's 76% of people that were polled across the United States are exhausted they're tired they're burnt out they're worn out this is up from 58% the year before, a few a months before the pandemic. Is anybody identify part of that 76%? You are tired. You are worn out. It's okay. You're exhausted. You come into the house of the Lord, you're exhausted. You're try, you really want to get the caffeine connection because you need that little boost of energy just to get you through church today because you're that tired. I'm going to tell you, we do almost anything to get a little lift. I'm, the, I'm, we, we, sometimes we can have the greatest plans in life. And, and, uh, and what we call this rat race that we're running, oftentimes we schedule our lives and we start backing things up so that we can be a part of any, everything so that we never miss anything. Jill and I did it this past week. We had a, a, one of our former students students was getting married in St. Augustine. And so our kids are, I have a 14 year old, a 10 year old, both girls and a two year old little boy. And so I did that so they can get me through the seasons of life. Just when I think things are going to settle down, here comes Ben and it says, no daddy, I need you for the long haul. You got to get some energy. You got to stay young. I may look like a grandpa when he graduates high school. I don't know, but I'm trusting he's going to keep me young. 
for a long time. But you see, the other day, we, we were, when we booked the flight for this, we, we, we looked at the schedules, we pulled out the calendar, and we realized that Braylon had a volleyball game at 10, Brooke had a soccer tournament starting at 9 o'clock, and if we could fly out early enough out of Daytona, we could get back in enough time. So guess what we did? We get up at 4 a.m., we fly out at 6 a.m., we get to Atlanta, everything's on track. We're going to be back at 9 o'clock to see part of Brooke's game and be at all of Braylon's game. And guess what happens? This is what happens in seasons of life. You get to Atlanta, and an unexpected change causes a delay. We're sitting there at the gate. We're getting ready. We, you know, we only have 20 minutes to run from one gate to the other, and they always put you at the other ends of the airport. And so we get on the train. We're rushing as fast as we can. We get to the delay only to realize that there's a small seal broken on the aircraft, and they're having to bring a new one in. And all of a sudden, in that moment, I'm gonna t- and the reason I say that is because sometimes life is going to happen. Sometimes situations are going to happen and it feels like I'm doing everything I can. Sometimes you even feel like, God, do you not hear my prayers? Do you not see everything that I'm trying to do, you know, to, for you and for my family and always trying to be there? And sometimes it feels like life is happening and he's not listening. You see, at that moment, it was, we, we can easily become, we're already at the point of exhaustion and tired and burnout and worn out. And we almost, do, we almost do anything to get a little lift. I'm going to tell you what happens. We get a cup of coffee. And a lot of times, one cup of coffee is not going to do. Can you put a double shot of espresso in there? Because I really need to pick me up. You see, we live in a culture right now, and 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 I just exemplified exactly the kind of culture we're living in. We are trying to do everything, be it everything, be everything for everybody, and it's not possible. And I'm just talking about the, the moms in that moment who are trying to be everything for everybody at every moment of every day. And then the husbands are doing their thing, trying to protect, trying to be there for the thing. And we live in a culture of a rat race life. I'm going to tell you that, that we, we do almost anything to get a little life. We ha- we'll take the supplements. We'll, we'll, we'll drink the monster energy drinks. We have the five-hour energy drinks, the double shots of espresso, whatever it takes. I'll tell you another quick story. I was, I was doing a revival in Ackworth, Georgia, and I'll to sort of exemplify what we're saying about Braylon had just been born. And so uh, Neil Wright, Brother Parker's son-in-law, was a pastor at that time. And we had come up to do a revival. And so I was driving back and forth to try to be the good husband and, do, and, and, and continue in the ministry and different things like that that. So about day three, I mean, it was like a a five night revival, maybe let's say night three of it. And I, I'm li- I'm not, Ackworth is right above Atlanta, and I've got an hour and a half drive home. And so guess what happens? I'm exhausted. The altar time, the, the power of the Lord was present. We prayed our hearts out. We got out really late, Sister Cagle. And guess what happens? I drive, and I was like, hey, I'm really tired, and I, I want to stay, but I'm really tired. I need to get back home so that I can help Jill. So you know what happens? I go to the store. I remember all the advertisements for five-hour energy drinks, and I go, and I buy one of them, and I pop it, and I'm like, okay. Hey, I feel pretty good. Let's go. And I get on the road, and as I'm getting past Atlanta, and I'm realizing that what we don't realize as we continue in this rat race and we continue going and going and going, pedal to the metal kind of lifestyle, I didn't realize that something was happening until about the south side near Jonesboro, I 75, 285 split. And I realize I hear this sound, and it jolts me awake because I had fallen asleep. The gas, my foot had come off the gas a little bit. And as soon as I jolt, you know what happens? My foot hits the gas, and as, as it begins to hit the gas, there's this semi-trailer that has gone, uh, that is coming around me. And by this time, he's coming back into the lane of where I'm at, and I almost plow right into him because I'm jolted awake. And I realize this five-hour energy drink is not true. You see, a lot of times in 3 John, in 3 John 1 and 2, it says, Beloved, he says, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health, even as it, as it goes well with your soul. The Apostle John is stating here that our health, our prosperity, which always leads to energy, are directly linked to our, the well-being of our soul. Our physical is directly attributed to our spiritual. We can, as we come into the house of God this morning, and those of you that are watching right now, I want, we cannot diminish the aspect that our spiritual lives will have the ability to give strength and energy, even when it feels like we're being weighed in upon by the situations and circumstances of life. John is trying, in the third letter, he's trying to tell him that your physical is directly tied to your spiritual, and that if you'll put your spiritual life first, that God will take care of you. God will supply 
all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And that's not just our, our needs of, of food and, and, and clothing. He's saying, I will provide you the energy that you need. I'll provide you the stamina that you need. You see, because no matter what we face in life, Jesus is always there. And Jesus is always the answer. We hear that. It's not a crutch. It's a promise. You see, a couple of weeks ago, I was, I was uh, we, Jill and I were, we, of course, you know, and, and, and she has rods in her back. And since our, my car accident in January, our, our back has been um, hindered sleep, of course. And we're sitting there, we're, we're going in there to buy something for Braylon for, uh, for her bedroom suit. And this guy, he's talking about, we're talking about beds. And all of a sudden, this woman's trying to sell us a bed. And then her manager comes up and he says, I want to tell you something. He says, you know, we've been talking about this pandemic called COVID-19. He says, but there's been a greater pandemic that has been going a lot longer than the, than the COVID-19. He said, it's the pandemic of lost sleep. And I was like, man, you are trying hard. <laughs> he tried so hard, he was successful. <laughs> you see, the, and I, I, thought, I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to tell you, a lot of times they're trying to give us these antidotes and they're trying to give us, you know, that there's an answer for this and there's an answer for that. There's an answer for COVID-19. There's an, but I'm going to tell you something. There are situations in our life like cancer and AIDS and even COVID-19. There's not a cure for it. There's not a cure for the things in our life. And there's situations and there's circumstances that we can try to lean into other situations and we can lean into self-help guides and we can find support groups. But I'm going to tell you that Jesus Christ is the answer to every situation and problem. He provides hope in the middle of the situation. And even, well, I'm gonna, I, and I heard a guy say the other day, he said when he was battling cancer, I can't remember where I read it, but he said, listen, he said, I don't lose the battle of cancer. He said, the way I see it, he says, the moment that I die, cancer dies, so it's an even draw. But for those of us that believe in Jesus Christ, we win. We will always win in this life and in the life to come because no, it's not just a draw. Jesus Christ is going to come back and he's going to raise us from the dead and a new body and a new life that can't be affected by this world. He's going to give us once more. Why? Because God never forgets his children. You see, the antidote to sin is the blood of Christ. The antidote to burnout, the antidote to weakness, the antidote to the lack of power is the, is the antidote to burnout is the power of Christ. The antidote to weakness is the energy of Christ. We see this in Scripture, but in Psalms 118 and 24, you know the Scripture very well. It says, this is the day, finish it with me, the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. We see, we have never lived in today before. We have never lived in October the 3rd, 2021 before, but God has. God works from the end to the beginning, and he's saying, I know what today is going to supply. And he looks at you and says, the reason that David can say this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it, is because he realizes I serve a God who's already in it. And no matter what I face, he's got enough energy, he's got enough power through the Holy Spirit that he's not only going to see me through, he's going to see me to victory through all of it. You see, all of creation is filled with renewable energy, what we talk about. All the way in the beginning in Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. When there was nothing, there was God. When there was nothing taking place, there was the Spirit of God. There was the energy of God. There was the power of God. And when you feel like you have nothing left, and you feel like you can't go another step, and when we feel like we can't take another blow and we can't go any lower than we are, there is the Spirit of God hovering over the face of His children, hovering over the Spirit of His people, saying, listen, if you'll turn to me, I will come in at that moment, and I will pick you up, and I'll give you the energy. I'm, what, that's why the Apostle Paul could look and say that I am pressed, but I'm not crushed. I'm persecuted, but I'm not abandoned. He says, I'm struck down, but I'm not destroyed, because deep down in the belly of his soul, he knew that his physical was tied to his spiritual and the spiritual man could not be defeated he knew the spiritual man had already been raised from the dead and that spiritual man Jesus Christ was one day in one form or one fashion going to rise up in him and that's where his hope was and that caused him to be renewed that caused his spirit to be renewed 
You see, as, uh, everywhere that we turn, of course, we live in the, in the, in the TVA. And you realize, and I, I'll never forget as a student at Lee when I first went to the fields of the woods through Cleveland. I rode by and I was like, man, why, what, is, what is that big thing along the river? And realized, come to know it would be TVA. Because you know what happens? They realize TVA and a lot of other places, if you look at different plants and different things, I grew up in a small town and, and, and near me was a town called Irwin, North Carolina. And my grandparents, uh, they worked at the Levi, um, the denim plant. They said that at that time, every piece of denim uh, of jeans was made in Irwin, North Carolina. And I, what I realized about that is, is beside one of the plants was the mighty Cape Fear River, one of the great rivers that runs through North Carolina and empties in the, in the, in the Atlantic Ocean. And I realized, and a lot of times, the reason that they would build those plants beside the rivers is because there was a continual source of renewable energy. There was a continual source. The, the, the Cape Fear River wasn't going to run dry. It was being fed from the mountains. And even we talk about the Mississippi, and even you can see that now on the West Coast where there are water shortages, and they're wondering, it's because there's a source of renewable energy. And I'm going to tell you something for you and I is that God put in creation, in all of creation, renewable energy. Not just in the waters, but in the sun is renewable energy. It gives life. But to all of creation, you and I have to look at that we are a part of his creation. And he put renewable energy on the inside of me and you. It's not tied to supplements. It's not tied to the foods that we eat, although it does happen. But it's tied to the spirit of the living God. It's tied to realizing that we are more than just a piece of flesh, that we are spirit, that God, the living God, is a part of us and that we can live and move and exist because he is in our lives. And so that, so that what I'm trying to get us to understand is, is that you're going to go through some situations and we're going to go through some really different circumstances. But what we have to do in that moment is first realize that he, we are creations of God and that God has put his spirit inside of us and that if we turn to him, he can renew us. He can cause us to be recharged. He can cause our minds to be rebooted. He can give us what the world is never able to give us. We have to connect with this renewable energy source Jesus did because we are leaky individuals living leaky lives. Do you realize even in the scripture that Jesus had to take, we, we call it fall break today, but Jesus had to take breaks. Even after he had just on the mountainside, he said, I've got to go. I've got to go by myself. He realized he wasn't just going to get, get away from the crowd. He was going to reconnect with his father. He realized that he was, a, he was that his, in his humanity, that he was also a leaky human at that time. But he realized that there was something about talking to God. He realized something that there was something about having a conversation with the Father, that when he prayed, he was rejuvenated. When he read the Bible, he was rejuvenated. Ministry was sucking the life out of him. The crowds were sucking the life out of him. Work was sucking the life out of him. But when he got by himself and was with his Father, it was an immediate power boost. It didn't take hours. It was immediate. And he was able to go back doing, and he did that constantly. You see, we're leaky individuals living leaky lives and our lives, I want to tell you that our lives live the direction of our strongest thoughts. Our lives will live in the direction of our strongest thoughts. The second point this morning, Proverbs 23 and 7 says, For as a man, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. You see, we can diminish the renewable energy by polluting our energy with worry and with doubts and different things. Oftentimes, things that we go through, when we go through, and I'm looking around and I'm realizing that some of us, the stories and what I know about you and the prayer requests that come in, some of you are very weak right now. I'm not trying to say that as a bad thing. I'm saying that life has taken something out of you. Situations and circumstances have left a gaping hole in you. Maybe it's someone that was that you you loved. Maybe it was somebody. Maybe it's through a divorce. Maybe it's through a situation. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe I'm looking at the caregivers and how my my. My mother took care of my grandmother before she died and, and how my mother-in-law is taking care of her mother-in-law and her sisters. And I noticed that although they're doing great things, it's taking something out of them. But, 
But I'm going to tell you, in that moment, God is trying to say, in those moments that you feel your weakest, when I am weak, he is strong. Paul was saying that in the middle of your weakness, his strength is made perfect in my weakness. What, what he's trying to tell me and you is, is that when you begin to pull away and reconnect with God, you'll realize that God's strength, it never diminishes. You can stay plugged into him and his power supply stays strong. It stays full. God is so full of power that he can renew every single one of us with just a spoken word and never, the power source, never go below 100%. That's how much power it has. But we've got to stop the energy leaks in our life. So let's talk about what some of those energy leaks are. In the middle of everything that we're going on right now, we talk about the word, and one of the words that, that, I, that comes to mind is that word of worry. It literally comes from an old English word. It means to choke slowly until we choke the life out of an individual. Worry will sit here. It's literally causing you to look at the situation. And you know what worry does? Worry causes you to look at a situation and to say, what are people going to think? And what are people going to say? And what are, what are people going to do? And what's going to happen? A couple of days ago, I asked a friend, I said, hey, I said, how did you make it in this situation? How have you made it in this environment? He said, well, no, first of all, he said, the, pe- the people that I think are talking about me, he said, they probably ain't talking about me. He said, the people that are talking about me, I don't care. And I thought, if I could just embody that life. Because I'm going to tell you something. You see, well, I was reading an article even this morning as we were just talking about the, it was talking about how, why pastors want to preach and yet they're scared to preach is because we realize that we have to preach a word. Yet we're, we're, we're called to be the pastor, yet we're also accountable as the servant. That scares me to humility. Because I realize I'm called to serve you, but I'm called to serve someone much higher than me. I'm called to preach the gospel, but if I don't preach the truth in the unadulterated word of God and I try to begin to put my spin on it and my opinion on it, I'm going to tell you something. It scares me today. It scares me to humility to the point that I say, God, I can't preach anything that's not in your word. I can't water down this to, to bring more people in and to make my pride be poof, puff, puffed up because the word sometimes is going to push people away. The truth sometimes is going to push people away. The truth is going to be full of love and full of truth, but Sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. And then you can begin to worry about what's taking place and what's happening, what's being said. You see, worry runs in the background. Take out your phone. Those of you that have an iPhone, real quick. Take out your iPhone and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is what worry does. Now, if I could show you, if you have your iPhone, real quick. Now, don't check your text messages. Don't set your fantasy football lineup. Don't, don't check Twitter and Instagram. Don't do that. You see, I just want you to, to you see, my, my, this is my phone, just on the home screen. And I'm just going to push it up real quick. And you know what I'm talking about. And this is a trick that a couple of years ago that Apple said. They said that your battery life, uh, let's see, mine is at 33% right now already. My battery life is at 33%. That means I've got that much power, and when it runs out, it runs out. It dies unless I recharge it. But you know what's happening is that while I'm on my, me- I'm on the- my message is at right now, I'm going to close that. And then what happens is I realize that I've already been on the phone. I've been on Walmart. I've been on Babel app. I've been on my mail. I've been on the Delta app, the Weather Channel, YouTube, McDonald's, the Brave, Speedway, Camera, Team Snap, Wallet, uh, Best Buy. I mean, all those have been going. Now, half the time, this was yesterday. But what I forgot to do was to, well, I got to close that out of my life and close that out, close that out, close that out, close that out, close that out. Because what is happening, although I don't even realize what's happening, is that behind behind what I'm focused on right now, if I got the Weather Channel, behind this right now, there is there is life-sucking, battery-sucking apps that used to have my attention, but now I don't have them, but they're still running in my life. That's what worry does. Worry is running like an app in the back. Background, although you, you're not focused on it right there, when you begin to slow down, it is sapping the life out of you. It's sapping the battery life. It's sapping the, 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 re, the, the energy out of your life. And it, it, I'm going to tell you something. Worry will lead us to nowhere. Anger is that one thing. It keeps you thinking about the wrong things of people or situations, dwelling on the worst instead of the, spa, on the, of the best. Anger can lead to unforgiveness and bitterness. And so energy leaks, they may be small or unnoticeable or, or at times, but other times they may be large and noticeable. Let's talk about, and to put it into perspective like this, we talk about worry. You could talk about money. We could talk about the weight. We could talk about all these different things. But I'm going to tell you something. That what happens is that when you go to the dentist, if he says you've got a cavity, it may have been unnoticed. It may have been like those apps. You didn't notice it was there. But if you don't, 
deal with it, it's going to get worse and worse. And that's what anger does. When someone makes you angry, when you, when, you get on that, when you get on that social media, when you get on one of those things, you begin to look at situations and how perfect everybody else's life is, and you begin to worry, and then worry turns to anger because you sit there and say, well, I, can't, I try to fix it, but I can't fix it, and I try to do these things, and if you're not careful, anger will begin to be that little cavity, and oftentimes what happens is when, when you're angry at somebody and you're thinking about the worst instead of the best, you're letting that energy be, su- be sucked out of you. All of a sudden, that cavity is getting worse and worse, and then becomes a tooth abscess. And then it begins to hurt. And that's when you finally go to see the doctor. But you see, for us, the energy, the renewable energy that God is, the spirit of the living God that God is trying to put in our life, it can, there there may be some energy leaks. You may, you may know some energy leaks that you have, but if they're left undefeated, whether it's a tooth abscess or a cavity, do you realize that it eventually can lead to death? Can lead to gum disease, which they tell me is one of the leading causes of death. All because it went unnoticed. All because it was in the background of our life and it wasn't dealt with. It was sucking the life out of you. It was sucking the life out of your marriage. It was sucking the life out of your, out of your school. It was sucking the life. That's why we, a lot of times we talk about when we talk about fall break is that we realize that, you know what? We've got to take a break. We've got to unplug. We've got to begin literally to pull ourselves away from those things because the only way it's going to happen is if we do it, people can tell us, preachers can tell us, pastors can tell you, hey, this is what, and the Holy Spirit will get, in your, get, get up into your life and say, hey, this is what's happening. And all of a sudden we're like, hey, I don't, I, I don't think I've got a problem. I think I'm good. And the whole time the Holy Spirit is saying, I need you to take a break from this. Well, oftentimes we'll sit there already and I'll tell your parents as, as teenagers, and I said it last week, but if we don't, if you're not careful, if we left, if we leave our children and we leave our young people, we leave our young adults, we have so many parents just send their kids off to college and say, hey, figure out on your own. I'm going to tell you something. We have got to remain connected. This world is waiting to connect them with so many things and they're not all, pro- they're not all profitable. They're trying to take from them and we've got to remain connected with them physically, but we've also got to to remain connected with them spiritually. We, you never are too old to impart spiritual wisdom and the Word of God into their lives. When you gather around the Thanksgiving table, pray. When you gather around the fall table, the fall break table, pray. I'm going to tell you because we've got to realize somebody is leading our life. Somebody is leading your life. Somebody is, is refueling your children. Somebody is refueling your spouse. Somebody is refueling your family. Somebody is refueling you. And what God is looking at us and saying, I am the only one who has the power and the energy to give you not just a, you know, a five-hour energy boost. I can give you a life boost. I can put you on, the, on, the, on, a, on, a, on a platform. I can put you on a cornerstone that's not going to falter with the world's worst earthquake, you will remain steadfast in that fortress. God is saying, you got to deal with the energy leaks. The scripture provides life and direction for the questions that we have in life. Psalms 119, 105, the very first scripture I remember because Sandra McLaughlin was a pastor's wife at my when I was in Gleaners, and she started this Bible book club when Brother McLaughlin uh, came to be on my pastor as a child. And the very first Bible that I, Bible verse I remember, because you know at that time, it was all about can I get something? If you put if you put a reward in front of me, and you tell me if you do this, I'll give you this ribbon. Guess what? Adam Jones was going to do it, eight, nine, ten years old. He's going to learn the memory verses because he wants that ribbon. He may not have the ribbon today, but he had the ribbon then. And so the very first scripture I remember was Psalms 119, 105. It says that thy word shall be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You see, the scripture provides life and direction for the questions that are in your life. Sometimes we need to do it. What we have to do is daily remove these energy leaks just as we bathe ourselves. Hey, we wash our hair. We brush our teeth. We feed ourselves the same way. We have got to remove the toxins from our life. You know, I I told you last week, I love Mountain Dew. And some of y'all went and told on me. Now, I thought what we talked about in here. Well, never mind. I, have a, I didn't have a Mountain Dew all day Saturday. I didn't have a Mountain Dew all day Friday, Thursday, because they don't sell them in the airport where I was at. Just kidding. But you see, what I know about that is that, you know what, I, I drink it and I drink it and, and, and it's good until I run out. 
But you know what I love about, and I love about January, especially and when we do these fasts and different things, is because, and I realized a couple of years ago, they're like, and, and somebody come to me at the church last week, and they said, hey, I want you to know I was exactly where you were at. Mary, you were there. Mary's the one. She said, I, I was exactly where I was addicted to Mountain Dew. You can break it. I was like, that's not what I want to hear. <laughs> I love it. You know, <laughs> listen, but here's the thing is that, she, and I, I, come, I, said, I know I can break it. I said, you know, I went 59 days on a 59 day fast uh, several years ago. I said, and I didn't want it until I tasted it. The Lord let me know, Adam, I'm going to tell you, and this is what my wife does and my mother-in-law who's going to tell me later, she reminds me of this. Adam, when that is flu- when those toxins are flushed out of your system, you know what happens? You feel better. You've got more energy. You've got more focus. You've got more everything. And, and how is it, and I'm talking to me and you, how is it that when God re- releases, releases the toxins out of our life and the Spirit of God comes and gives us a brand new energy that we seemingly go right back to it? We have felt the power of God. We've walked in the freedom of God. We've felt we've walked in the freedom of these toxins and these energy leaks out of our life. Yet somehow, when we get right back in the proper environment, we get right back around the gossiping person that's coming in the form of a prayer request. We get right back in that environment and we, we falter and we fall back in. But what the Spirit of God is saying, hey, every day that you wake up, every day before you go to bed, you've got to say, Holy Spirit, I need you to sanctify me. I need you to sanctify me before I say a word. I need you to sanctify my eyes. Put the blinders on my eyes that I don't turn to the left or to the right looking at something I shouldn't be. God, sanctify my tongue today. Sanctify the words. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. Oh, Lord, my God, my Redeemer. We, I'm going to tell you something. When we start the day and when we end the day with those same prayers, we will live a life. Our sleep will be better, not because of the mattress that we sleep on, but because our spirits are clean and pure and God is, is fueling us with the Spirit of the living God. That's what He's trying to get us to understand. Every day we, have, we know we pick up debris. We, we, we take a shower because we pick up sweat. We, we sweat. We, we let those toxins out of our life. We pick up germs. I mean, we're, we're, we are walking around right now with more hand sanitizer than we ever have in our life, trying to keep our hands clean, trying not to get sick. I'm going to tell you something. Your spiritual is tied to your physical. What we've got to do right now, there's a lot of times right now, people are making, I was with, with Dr. Lamb's brother in, 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 uh, at the wedding the other day. He told me, he said, you know, last year when COVID hit, he said, I had to make a conscious decision. He impacted me. He didn't know what he was saying. I had to write it down. He said, I had to make a conscious decision. My wife would stay in. She would not go anywhere. She would not do anything. He said, but I had to make my mind up. I'm not going to stop living. I'm not going to become a hermit. I'm not going to do these things. And I'm telling you today that we have got to make a conscious decision every day of our life that fear is not going to grab a hold of us. We are not going to be held back by worry. We're not going to held back by anxiety. I am a man of God. I'm a woman of God. I'm protected by the power of God. I'm going to use common sense. I'm going to respect other people, but my life is not going to be dictated by a newscast or somebody telling me how bad it is when my word is telling me how good it is, that I've got a power. I've got a spirit that can protect me and anoint me. And even if I go out, I still win because God is going to renew renew my life. So we've got to pick up our lives and stop allowing other people and other situations than the real energy source and the life source to fill us up with these things. Now, don't you leave this church today saying, Pastor, saying this, that. No, I'm saying we have got to live your life for yourself. I told you, have common sense. I told you to pray about it. Pray about everything in your life. If you consider, what do I do? I have the vaccine? Do I not? Pray about it. I tell you, God knows you better than you know yourself, and his spirit will speak to you personally and directly. Stop worrying. Stop being angry about everybody else. Philippians 4 and 8 and 9, I'm closing. Julie, if you want to get ready. Verses 8 through 9 of Philippians chapter 4, he says, finally, brothers, he says, when you start to think about those things, he says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Johnny McDaniel would tell you, find, the, find something to praise it and praise it. Find the good and praise it. He says, what you have learned 
and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Notice what he says. I'm going to read verse 9 again. He says, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. But we all know, most of us know Isaiah 40, 31 and the final promise from God. But they who wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Say it with me. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Would you stand with me across this building? And there's some, when we started 1030, they said, Adam's going to preach longer. I stopped at 1146. I'm going to tell you right there where you're at, I, I know we're going to take a break. But you know a statistic that I heard the other day, and it troubled me. Because I've been following these things. I follow what, and I, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. And the reason I bring this message today is not to tell you your pastor's burnt out. I'm not burnt out. I'm renewed by the Spirit of the living God. Have there been hard times? Absolutely. But I'm going to tell you my life source comes from this Word of God. But the reason I, I was listening and it said that there is a tidal wave of pastoral resignations coming in 2022 based on a pastoral survey from Barna. And it said because there are some pastors who are burned out, they were, they, were, they were wanting to leave before the pandemic, but they're going to see them through. And they said, they said these words. <clears throat> I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that I'm going to finish the statement because not, I don't want you to hear, I don't want you to read in between anything. Can we just, can we just get that? I want you to hear me for what I'm reading it for, because I'm not the only pastor at this church. Okay. Pastor Kathy's first Sundays today, 20 seven days she's been battling it. Okay? And I read this, this thing and it, said, and, it, and it said that there's a tidal wave of pastoral resignations coming in 2022. That, and I kept reading and it said they're, they're coming through and they said, but the wave can be lessened. The wave can be lessened by congregations just simply showing appreciation. And I was like, hmm, that's true. And I said, listen to what they said. Now, I'm, I'm throwing this out because I listen, don't read between lines. This is what they said. We don't need more money or more time off. We just need to know that you're not mad, that you're going to, that you love us, that you're praying for us, and that together we're going to get through this. That could be said, that's said about pastors, but how many healthcare workers, Brad, how many people do you know, could, could you say that about you? He's a COVID nurse. How many, how many school teachers could we look at and say that about? How many, how many workers in the, in the university could say that? How many parents could say that? How many people, I'm going to tell you, because right now, I'm gonna, as the people of God, the reason I'm talking to you this morning, the reason I say that is because you and I, we as the people of God, have a power source to the people who don't know God. The people who are, who are giving up and walking away, who are saying enough is enough. I, I, I could tell you statistics, it's all, it all looks bleak, but I'm going to tell you that the real statistic is that I can mount up with wings like eagles and soar. I can run and not grow weary. I can walk and not faint because the Spirit of the living God is wanting to pour His Spirit and energy in my life. That's what we need. So I'm going to ask you, if you're I'm not going to say if you're tired. I'm not going to do the normal. If, you're, if you feel like you're burnt out, if you feel like you're, I'm going to say every single one of us in this building need to find a place in this altar and say, God, I don't know what's coming at the end of the day today. I don't know what's coming tomorrow. I don't know what's going to take place, but I know you're already in there and I need you to put inside of me today what I'm going to need for that moment and I need you to renew me. Father, if I've not been reading my Bible, please forgive me but give me a passion to read your word. Father, if I've not been praying enough, Father, forgive me and let's not stay stuck there. A lot of times we get ready, set, go and we, we try to get ready. I'm getting ready to read a Bible. I'm getting ready to get in a plan but we never move to set and we never, certainly never move to go. And I feel the Holy Spirit saying, go! Stop getting ready. Let's go. 
Some of us are st- we're getting ready for the, uh, for the uh, we, we look at the rapture as an escape clause. It's not an escape clause. It's the last, it's like you run out of time. Our gospel is not a ready, set gospel. It's a go you therefore to the world gospel. There are people that are lacking, that they, they're looking to everything else in the world for energy. And we have the source of life. They're looking for everywhere else for life. And we have the source of life. His name is Jesus Christ. And he's telling us, I can put my spirit in you right now for you to go. Can we find a place to pray real quick? Can you, not real quick, let's pray. We, we want to rush our prayers. You know, can you find a place to pray in this altar? Would you move from where you're at and just begin to pull yourself and say, Father, I need you in my life. I need you right now. Can we find a place to pray? Let's find an altar. Find an altar and say, God, here I come. God, I'm coming to you with everything in my life. I'm coming to you with my hopes. I'm coming to you with my, with my dash dreams. I'm, all these things. Listen, church, there's some things that we've been going through, and we can't change the past, but we can change how it affects us moving forward. So I refuse to allow my life to be dictated by the choices and the decisions of others. I will not sit here and allow the, my energy, my life, my mind, my thoughts, my, the way that I'm living my life to be affected because of someone else's choice. My God sees where I'm at. So Father, I pray Holy Spirit, I pray right now God that you would anoint our minds that you would anoint our hands Father, anoint our spiritual lives right now. You are calling us right now to be renewed Lord, to renew. Lord, we're going to wait on you. We're going to wait to see a victory. We're going to wait to see restoration. We're going to wait to see redemption. But Lord, as we wait upon you, you're going to give us to the wings of eagles. We're going to soar outside of the situation. We're going to look at it from a different perspective than what everyone else has gone through or what everyone else is advising us about. You're going to allow us, God, to soar above the horizon, to soar to the highest heights of the atmosphere, to see from your perspective, to see that there's more to the situation than the devastation. There's more to the destruction. There's construction that you are working working all things together for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. As so, a Father, we're going to mount with the wings of eagles. We're going to keep running and we're not going to grow weary. We're going to walk and we're not going to faint because we're not going to start stop going after you with everything we've got. So Father, would you spirit pour out your spirit? Pour out your spirit to the people. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your energy. Pour out your anointing upon our lives. It's your breath in our lungs. And God, God, as we breathe in, we breathe in your power. We breathe in your life. We breathe in your understanding. We breathe in your restoration. We breathe in your hope. It's your breath in our lungs. In Jesus' name.
as we get those, those who are praying, continue to pray, we don't want to, we want to diminish it. But you know, when we worship, we're energized. And it don't matter what the worship looks like for you. It could be the, the brown backs when I grew up, blue backs for some of y'all. Or it could be the Maverick City for today. It doesn't matter. Whatever encourages you, whatever you are able to connect with will encourage you as you begin to sing that song. Worship encourages. Prayer encourages and energizes. I'll tell you, we, we mentioned Lee Swafford. His, his funeral service will be at the Chattanooga National Cemetery on Tuesday at 1, 1 p.m., 2, 2 p.m., 2 p.m. Of course, then we can be a direct, be a graveside uh, ceremony. Brother Lee Swafford, we want to continue to pray for him. Who is uh, that? Some of you may remember him as Lisa Reimer's uh, brother-in-law. So we want to reach out and just keep them in prayers as we go forward. But that last part about the rising up with the wings of eagles. An eagle soars higher than other than other, than other birds are able to. And they say further than any other bird is able to see. When the energy, when the power, not just the energy, but when the power of the Spirit, when the power of a Christian life is in full effect, you will find yourself rising higher than the situation you find you're in the middle of in that moment. And you will be able to see further than what the enemy is trying to cause you to be blinded with in that moment. That's something the world cannot offer. That the Lord will allow his people in the middle of that situation to keep running and not grow weary. Running from temptation and not grow weary that they're going to fall. Walk and not grow faint that they're going to give in. Running as hard as they can after all of God, I promise you, from Genesis to Revelation, his word remains true that he never forgets his children. He'll never forget you. No matter how dark, no matter how bright, no matter how tough the struggle, no matter how mighty the victory, God never forgets his children. So, Father, as we get ready, Lord, as, as our staff and our others, Lord, as our Awana staff and our youth staff and the nursery preschool staff and others and our women's ministries team and our men's team and others begin just to take to a pause this week. Father, we pray that you would, your spirit of the living God would, would renew their time as they pour into families and pour into their lives. Father, it's not that we stop ministry. It's, it's not that we stop praying. It's not that we stop responding. It's not that we stop reading the Bible. Father, it's an intentional time. Lord, that we you're calling us to as a church body to reflect Lord, on what you're calling us to do. Lord, what you're calling us is the people of God, the sons and daughters of God, to reconnect with the Father, to recharge. Father, we pray that you will find ourselves doing that, not just in a month, one week or two weeks a year, every single day. Give us the courage to evaluate, Lord, but to participate and to be transformed by what you're doing in our lives every day. In Jesus' name. As they continue to sing this song, you're able to be blessed today as we go out, be reflect, encourage one another. But, but I pray you'll be empowered and renewed every day of our life. It's his breath in our lungs. In Jesus' name.